Alrighty folks, and welcome back once more. Apparently, let's listen to Strahd la laughing. Laughing. Alright, we gotta backtrack. I believe that's this way. Also, there's... Yeah, it's all rocks, right? Let's see, there's loot. Oh, it's throwing knives and rocks. But yeah, so we have another mage in the party. Like, that's certainly something. And then there's... There's this area. And a spell access. Alright, she has no spells. Did we memorize for her? Yes. Okay, can we sleep? Yes. Awesome. Where'd she... Man. Rove is going to be an issue, I think. Painful. It's mostly... It's rough right now because we're outdoors and our front row is completely useless. Okay, I love how we just slept there. We just slept for 72 hours. Friggin' ridiculous. Does it have? Oh, it does! From the first game, it, if, if you start typing it, it clears your... If you say that, I know you're just lurking around the corner. I see your stupid dog, cat, weird warg legs. Come on. Come on. Yeah, you suck. Wonder. I think I just killed it. Anybody else? I'm sure. Okay, alright. So a pile of rocks. Uh, there's some goodies down to the south. Is there anything up to the north here? Um, an enemy. Looks like another... Another warg, perhaps it is? Agonizer's Scorcher seems to be blocked by a, a, a bit less in this. It's not like in, in the latter games where if you, like, nick the corner of a wall with it, it just doesn't affect anything. I appreciate that. He says moments before just horribly missing. It's tough to navigate through this because like these trees, their collision doesn't match like their footprint, like their squares, like you can't squeeze by them like you'd think you would. It's okay, we're, we're navigating. I do kind of like that this game has a fair amount of stuff on the overworld. Like, I think Menzo Berenson was good for that as well. Actually, eh, they were all, I, I would say, pretty good for that. I think... I think this and Stone Prophet are better... than Menzo with regards to world design, because, like, Menzo is entirely... Like, you hit the Underdark and that's just the rest of the game, is you're in caves. Whereas these games kind of mix it up. They at least give you, like, the... the illusion of... Of, of choice with the overworld. Oh my lord, there we go. Stone Prophet was really good for that. I don't remember how expansive the overworld in this one was. I know that there are a handful of areas, but I think Stone Prophet's probably got more in that category, of course. You just, yeah, the collision the collision on on projectiles is so much more forgiving here. Oh my lord. Like, it's actually... Magic Missile's actually hitting things. It's weird, but I'll take it. Okay, another nine hours of sleep. Just getting spells back. Uh, and just more rocks. I wonder, can, like, I, can I throw these things? No, they just stop at the fog. It's a very thick fog, reminiscent of some form of... Strange soup. It's more a liquid than a fog. Okay. We have to go... and auto-scroll and... Oh my god, let me turn down the damn CPU speed. There we go. Makes the map scrolling a little bit more reasonably paced. Is this where we came from? I think it was. I'm not entirely sure. I know that there's another NPC out 
like where we started, and I would like to recruit them. Okay. Good shot. Disappointed. These are all the cleric scrolls I don't give a shit about. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and I think there's an NPC like down here. Oh, now there are two of them. No, there's still at least one. Bajan will not save you from me. Magic missile spells cooking off in the distance. Ah, hell. I've got three of them. One of these things is like a TPK. Oh, Rogue just cooked two of them, though. Oh, ma masterful evasion there. Didn't evoke, or didn't evade the fuego. Did I nap again? No, too many monsters. All right, we've got a magic missile and a flame arrow. Oh, here we go. Direction and walk it. Jesus. I'm telling you guys, this is this is like some some tabletop, except it feels like we're still first level. We just have more. So look at all of them. There's no way on God's green earth that I can kill four of these things. Like, one of them is just... It, it's its purely because Rove is such a fucking flake. If it weren't for Rove, I would, like, actually be like, all right, yeah, I'm gonna pick a fight. But that happens. Like, without fail, they just murder Rove immediately. And it's like... How many attacks around you guys get? Just like... There are other party members. Is this the front row here? Like... Pretty sure it's not. We have a one-third chance to hit Rove. And I don't think the AI in this is good enough to be, like, prioritizing shitty AC on the wizard as a target. I don't know. That's not even getting started on these fucking goblins. Let's see, over there, you little shit. That's right, be stuck on that tree. <laughs> I thought there was an NPC over here. I just see a pile of loot. There's like a merchant or something out here that'll join our party. He's a, he's a heavy set dude. I think he's just like a straight fighter. Look at this. Look at this. He had like a million hit points. Good God. Combat in this is just insanity. No, I'm gonna reload and we're gonna back off and try sleeping. See if we can't mash ourselves up against the wall. No, too many monsters. That might be, for this, it wouldn't surprise me if that were just like a zone wide thing that we just can't sleep in this area. Because I guess, fuck you, that's why. What do we have over here? Oh my God. I can't do anything. He's terrible. I mean, here, I'll get rid of it. That's a plus one quarter staff. Um, here, Rove, you can have a slightly better armor class now. <laughs> the only way he's... I love that the only way that he's unencumbered is if he's, like, just only wearing a robe and nothing else. It's so bad. Just absolutely terrible. Okay. Now it's just, like, save scumming on the off chance of RNG not being... Rove immediately dying every time, but... No. And this is one of the reasons why, like, with the gold box games, I didn't completely dumpster Rove's stats. Or, like, um... My playthrough of Wizardry, I didn't completely dumpster their stats, because, like... You know, the meme is real, obviously, that, that Rove is, you know, a piece of paper to be shorn at fate's convenience. But holy shit. Ooh, ring of protection. I'm gonna give that to Rove for the time being. 
And thus begins the hoarding of the healing potions. And it was good. This short sword, I mean, it's gonna be better than a dagger. I don't know. I don't know. Can Rove actually memorize? Detect magic? No. And neither can Velika. When we get a cleric, we'll be able to to do that, but I don't know. I've also been told that I shouldn't fuck up. There's a werewolf and a paladin's quest line in this. I make no promises that I won't fuck them up. I'm, I'm just I'm just playing the game. If I fuck them up, I fuck them up. I don't I don't care. All right, 144 hours. My God. Partying with no healing, you guys. Don't do it. Clerics exist for a reason. Fucking healing batteries. Anybody level, actually? Uh, and, but no, that's the other thing is like, none of this shit is worth any experience. I saw you like spawn in, you sons of bit. Oh shit, there's two of them. Get him! Get him! They, they ganked me, sneaky fuckers. Alright. Alright. Seriously, I just want to find this hireling. I just, I require more meat. I thought, oh, he's in the uh, southeast corner, okay. Fuck it. We running. This is the proper Ravenloft experience here, just running through the wilderness, praying. Oh my god, Like, you can't do anything. You have no chance to react. It's just Rove is dead. All right, so let's try and make for this. Can't tell. OK, I was going to say, I, it felt like things are respawning here. That's probably why I'm not getting any experience for killing this stuff is because the monsters here. Yeah, OK, that makes a little bit more sense. I was going to say, because like when we first came through here, like we killed shit, so there should be another one, like, right around here? Uh, maybe not. Oh, yeah. So maybe when you, like, leave and come in through the, um, the road... Really? When you leave and come in through the road, it, uh, like, respawns all the monsters or something. That would explain probably why you can't sleep here either, then. Maybe they do that because, like, you can have random encounters when you sleep. And it might, like, buck with, um, uh, like, the, how the the monster spawning for repopulating this area works. But yeah, that, that totally explains why, like, these things aren't getting us, like, any experience. I mean, admittedly, most lower... Hit die monsters. I mean, I think that was maybe a little bit of XP there. Let's see, 2056. Here, uh, flame arrow. Alright. Okay, so yeah, the, the goblins are a little bit of XP. They're a couple hundred. Which, given how incredibly lethal they are, doesn't really make a whole lot of, uh, difference to me. I did see, though, in this dude's camp, he had, like, a shield and some gear sitting around. Good sound effect. Just make sure I don't have anything coming up behind me. Alright, now it's all gonna be Velika and her magic missiles. It's like fucking... A dozen of these things. There's like three of them just camping this corner. All right, let's come back here. Let's see if um if we go into this basement and sleep. If that respawns everything topside. If it does, we're just gonna leave. Like I would like to actually play the game as opposed to being just trapped in the the noob area here. Do we have additional bullshit? Oh, it doesn't look like it. Okay, so yeah. 
trying to think of like the other hirelings in this. I know that there's another. I think it's another magic user we can get in town. She's the the chicken like the mayor's house, drinking all his booze. Oh, bad aim. Lord. Oh, get fucked. Really? Good God, the hit point difference. These uh, goblins have like, I think it's like three hit dice, maybe four. So on the high end, that's can't see the enemy. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Good Lord. Like, is this the front row then? Like, maybe now Rove won't take any damage? I don't know. Because, like, they're only attacking. The only people that are taking damage are Chunk and uh, Rove. And Velika has the most hit points out of us, so. Hey, buddy. Hello, you've done well to keep your head on your shoulders in this company. Who might you be? Don't you recognize a proud merchant when you see one? Well, I'll admit to being an adventurer first and a merchant second. I was doing some trading when they caught me on the road. Oh, I think the goblins ate my goods and may have been about to do the same to me. Well, don't stand there gawking. Cut me loose. Yeah, all right. You say you're an adventurer. It's enough of your life. Can't you free? Nah, we're not going to shit on him. Merchant, eh? Then you'll understand I'm cutting you loose, but not for free. Uh, for free, that is. Can you aid us? By the gods, I do thank you. But as I said, these beasts have all I had, including some of Barovia's finest brandy wine in their belly. All I can offer is my help, at least until some profit comes my way. But till then, my hands and heart are yours. All right. Sure, I have a feeling in this dark place, a man of your talents will be I'll useful. You. I know that I'll not let us fall prey to goblins. I've learned their tricks. By the looks of you, you're not from Barovia. No, not even Kartakis. No matter. For me, it seems strangers are a good omen. All right. Now we have Falcon. Straight fighter. 34 hit points, though. That's a meat shield if I've ever heard. An 18. He has a percentile strength, too, which I'm also wholly okay with. He's going to be a much better fighter than Velik is. Not quite as beefy, though. But again, like, I don't know what the front row is. Let me actually check the manual here. Uh, let's see. Combat. To attack. No. How about, like, just where my party is? I'm, I'm pretty sure it's still the center that are your front row. I mean, the easy way to check would be just go into a dungeon, I suppose, instead of digging through the manual, so that's probably what we'll do. Okay, um... And then... where's your gear? Oh, Jesus Christ! Oh, hey. Let's see, cure serious wounds, more potions... Potions, potions, a helmet... Throwing knife. Wow. Actually hitting things. What is this world? Okay. What, uh... There we go. Man, no thief abilities whatsoever. God. Yet another game where thieves are just getting done. So, so dirty. Ooh, a two-handed sword. Oh, and some leather. Is that to Velika? I don't know if you have spells left. I don't think. I mean, it's the same AC as her. Ooh, that's a robe of protection she had on. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna give that to fucking Gimpy in the back there. Okay, yeah, let's uh swing in here for a nap again, and I'll see who can attack. I'm pretty sure it's still the center is the front row, but I may be wrong. And if that is the case, that would explain Rove's pretty pitiful survival stats there. 
Yeah, okay, so it is. The front row is on the left. Oh, that's gross, and I hate it. All right, uh, Velika, back row then. Uh, and she can actually use Rove's quarterstaff. Okay, all right. Ew, but that that does explain that explains why everything was just primarying Rove down. OK, I feel a little bit less just completely beside myself with what in the fuck game devs now. But ew, front row on the left. I mean, I guess this was before because like in the latter games, the central portraits are kind of like on the screen. They're moved up a little bit, so they're like in front of the, the back row portraits. I don't know. I don't know. What's this say? Old Svalich Road. Yeah. Get ambushed by all kinds of fun stuff on this road. Is that another bandit up ahead? Buddy. That's right. The fucking thick lads are in front now. Good lord. We can actually stand and fight. I should actually probably have Velika in the front row over Chunk because she has more hit points than he does. Oh my. That's a number of, of victims. I just realized that the spellbook takes up both characters. That's kind of obnoxious. Man. The interface certainly, uh, in the span of, you know, a couple games, came quite a ways. It's pretty impressive. Fucking that. Oh my god. Get the goddamn things, guys. There we go. They've got like two hit points or something. Just nobody can hit them because low level D. Well, no, it's just probably bad rules because low level D&D &D is bad, but well, it's also that they're they're two weapon fighting, so they're taking penalties to attack rolls and stuff. Don't have any rangers in this here party. All right, so this is blocked by trees. I assume those are probably rocks back there. Any levels yet? Uh, yes, actually, Rove and Chunk leveled in Thief, which <sighs> fucking one hit point on Rove. Uh, it's gonna be a thing. All right, Rove, you got an extra flame arrow, and that's it. All right, good job, buddy. We, sh we probably should go to Barovia instead of just wandering the lands out here. Okay, just put it up here. I had to say that that area transition between this chunk of the Svalich Road and the previous one, like that's fucking smooth. I didn't even notice it, and I knew it was there. Cheeky devs, get out of here, you fucking bats! Are you guys hostile too? Yes, you are. You are also bats. They don't look like bats from a distance. 120 hours of nap time. All right, here we go. Finally, By the gods, this cannot be Delt's beloved land. There in the distance, mountains the like of which I've never seen. Before we wander aimlessly through town, we do not know it might be best to find its first citizen, a mayor, burgermeister or such. Somewhere on the edge of town, I'd guess. We should search for a large prominent building, perhaps surrounded by stone barrier or a gate so that power and wealth often display themselves. All right. I can't remember. I think you can like, I think there are thieves in this town, too. Yeah, fuckers coming at me with knives. Ain't nobody safe in Barovia. I think one of them is behind me. Yes, I wish that when they started fighting you, the enemies would just hold still. Because like they keep apparently one of them got. But yeah, oh my good God, there's like fucking four of them. Jesus. And I, how did I not save? Ugh. Guys. You guys. I'm 
beside myself. Okay, no. This is Fallich Road. Just making sure the game hasn't locked up. Okay, so there was the area transition. I noticed at that time. Alright. This. This. Oh, hey. That's right. There were bats. I do like that there are, like, respawning overland enemies. Like, it, it, it's more immersive in this, having it be, like, wargs and the bats and, um, like, bandits. And then compared to, like, in Stone Prophet, it was always just, like, those fucking screaming skeletons, the desert skeletons. And, I mean, I guess there were also dust devils and man scorpions? But, eh. Barovia is a staking unwelcome place. This is the rancid heart of it. Damn, Rove. Else got no chill. Oh, that's why they're so nasty. They're not bandits, they're fucking darklings. Okay. Oh, and we got poison. That's great. Oh, there goes our one Kiag Tom's ointment. Man. My coin for a Sacco ointment. This is the wall around the Burgomeister's place. I would assume so. Uh, yeah, Burgomeister's mansion. Let's see, we're at 26 minutes. Yeah, we'll talk to him. And then we'll poke around in here. So I don't remember if he's just like lurking in here. I don't remember how doors open. Okay, we can just click on doors to open them. Just fucking oil of fiery burning, just you know, laying around. Like you do. I love how that we can just like walk into the Burgermeister's house and just start like rooting through all of his shit. Next episode is going to be us rooting through town and stealing from the inhabitants. Back here. I know you're in here somewhere, you portly drunk fucker. Where are you? Ooh. Book protection? No. A dagger, possibly magical. A wand of paralysis. All right, sure, sure. This is probably that sorceress's room, if I had to guess. I know she's in here drinking herself into unconsciousness somewhere. Let's see, we found the home of a man who can afford to be unstin unstingingly, unstintingly generous to himself. This demonstration convinces me of one thing when I'm ready to change careers. Tis a Burgo master I shall become. Yeah, there she is. And there he is. Hello. Uh, please forgive me, I'm not schooled on how to address the Burgomeister. How do you... My dear sweet traveler, please. We Burgomasters are called by our title. I expect you will make my home yours while you are here. In the name of Lord Strahd, whose humble servant I am, please relax. Enjoy. I see another enjoys your hospitality, an elf of striking mane and grace. Maybe converse with her? Strahd has such a keen interest in the unusual, but then... <laughs> I'm rambling. Feel free. Join my other guest in conversation, if that is, she will agree. As fellow pilgrims in Ravenloft, you may have much to discuss. Burgomaster, we've heard so much of Count Strahd von Zerovich. In some lands, weeks might pass before a traveler learns the ruler's name, but not here. Who is this man? Ah, I was coming to that. You see, your interest in the Great One is matched by his interest in you. As Burgomaster, I have been instructed to present you with a letter of invitation from Strahd himself. It is a great honor. Uh, Burgomaster, what does Strahd know of us? Does he invite every visitor to his castle? Was your elven guest invited? 
At the risk of being rude, I say the dignity of my office would suffer were I to answer so many questions. The honor of Strahd's enchanting offer extends to you alone. My advice is not to refuse. And if my words do not impress you, if I cannot persuade you, he will compel you to go. His carriage awaits even now. Please allow me to take you there. Uh, perhaps another time. I cannot say if the invitation will stand. Please reconsider before much more of the day has passed. Yes, yes, I shall, maybe, if you're lucky. Consider it. It's God's invitation. Can I read it? Unto the visitors in my land, Count Strad von Zerovich, Lord of Barovia, sends greetings. Gentle travelers, I pray you cede to my humble wish and meet me tonight in Castle Ravenloft. Your activities have brought many questions to my mind, as you in turn must possess certain curiosities about me. I feel a friendly interview if to be in order. My carriage shall bear you to the castle in both comfort and safety. It is therefore in pleasurable anticipation of our conference that I await your arrival, Count Strad von Zarevich. Well, that's... That's adventure right there waiting, but it's adventure that's going to wait until next time. For now, though, I'm going to go ahead and call an episode here. So as usual, folks, thank you for watching. I hope you had a good time. And I will see you all next time, wherein we're probably going to get our ship pushed in by Doom Guards. Until then. Hey, you made it to the end. Nice. If you had a good time, check out one of these other series, see if you like them. Drop a like, comment, or subscribe if you'd like to support the channel, feed the machine and all that. And as always, thanks for watching.